killer. I don't really know how to start this video, so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and start off by saying that today we are going to be talking about and reviewing Dragon Ball Super episode 116, and I was supposed to watch it yesterday, but yesterday I was ex extremely tired. I had completely forgotten that yesterday was even Saturday and to begin with, and as usually when Dragon Ball Super uh, comes out on Crunchyroll and stuff like that for the Crunchyroll subs, so we can actually watch the episode of course. Uh, if you want to go watch the latest episode or catch up on Dragon Ball Super, there will be a link down in the description for Crunchyroll. Just go down there. Trust me, you want to catch up on Super. Or if you want to catch up on Super and don't really want to continue on waiting for the dub to catch up and stuff like that. Because the dub will, will take a few months or at least to catch up on, you know, Japanese version or the sub for Dragon Ball Super. So, anyways... Today in Dragon Ball Super, we start off with Goku in Ultra Instinct because last week we saw Goku go Ultra Instinct because uh, he kind of, you know, lost a lot of his energy. I guess in the episode they say that Kefla or Kefla uh, kind of rivaled like the amount of power that the Genki Dama, the Spirit Bomb kind of had and I don't really know how to explain it which is why I say if you want to go down in the description to go watch the episode and you know before you watch it there you know the link is there so yeah anyways the episode starts off Goku's an ultra instinct he powers up and of course uh, Keofla is incentivized to power up as well because you know, I guess she she just gets a lot of inspiration from Goku when he powers up. It's like really early in the morning, so I'm still like kind of like fatigued. I'm not fully awake yet, so uh, you know, Goku powers up. Uh, it looks really fucking cool. Does that, uh, the animation for this episode was actually pretty decent? Uh, I would say it's it's above it's above average. I I really liked it. I really liked all the action and stuff that happened in the episode. So, uh, Kaelfla proceeds to go Super Saiyan two. Uh, I kind of assumed that she can go Super Saiyan 2, she just hasn't done it yet. And so I guess for the finale of like this whole fight between Kaofla and Goku, they decided to make they decided to make her go Super Saiyan 2. It was pretty cool, I guess. It, you know, it was just kind of like whatever. It was just like another power boost, so it's okay. Uh, so of course they're so of course the gods and stuff like that are watching the fight. They're wondering you know, what the fuck is Jiren thinking about? What's going on right now? Uh, they actually say that Goku is giving off a lot of heat, like the last time when he fought Jiren. So that shouldn't be a surprise. <clears throat> that shouldn't be like a surprise or anything. But you know, we saw some mentions that you know her energy and her power is probably you know the reason why he kind of like kind of went Ultra Instinct again and incentivized him to go through his limits. Stuff like that. So, of course, Kaofla decides to go charge at Goku, even though he's in Ultra Instinct. Uh, I kind of find it hilarious and funny that she just doesn't fucking care that he's in Ultra Instinct and he, he could just dodge all of her attacks. So, she powers up like a beam or whatever, a, like a charged attack in her hand, and then she charges up at Goku. And then, of course, Goku, because Ultra Instinct, uh, he kind of just dodges it <laughs> he dodges it there's a lot of dodging from goku in this episode uh there's a lot of statements that are said about <laughs> that are said in this episode like oh uh kale Fla super saiyan 2 rivals genki dama right but it's like you have to understand that the genki genki dama was had the energy of those who gave energy in this tournament of, tournament of power so it probably would be kind of easy to be able to rival the Genki Dama that was used in the Tournament of Power. But if it was to rival the Genki Dama that was used against Majin Buu, I feel like it would be a little bit more harder considering that it's taking energy from the entire from an entire planet. But I don't know. I'm not a power scaler. I always use that as an excuse, even though I try to power scale anyway. <laughs> so um Piccolo said some stuff about her being like super powerful too. Uh saying that her strength is like immeasurable i forgot what he says but something some, something power scalers scalers will probably freak out about so 
anyways, she powers up like a like a attack in her hand and stuff like that. She charges, um, she charges at Goku, but Goku, like I said, in his Ultra Instinct, he's just glowing with the fucking Ultra Instinct power. Uh, in the episode, he actually is able to speak while in the transformation, which uh, last time that we saw him in episode one ten, we. We know we didn't see him like speak whatsoever, and in the times that he did like kind of quote unquote like screen grunts or even speak just in general, he kind of sounded like really like zombified almost, like kind of like a like a monster or whatever. It, it sounded really cool, but uh, he doesn't have that sound effect. It's literally just like his normal voice whilst in Ultra Instinct. Anyways, like I said again, Kalefla charges at Goku. Goku dodges it, and then of course. Kalefla's just about to fall on her ass. It's hilarious. Uh, she starts charging at him. She starts throwing punches over and over again. Goku's just dodging. He's dodging all the attacks. And everyone's just watching. And they're like, how the fuck? <laughs> uh, they're like, how could she not hit him? And then, you know, Chompa's freaking out. <laughs> Chompa's freaking out. He's just like, how the fuck is she cannot, how the fuck can she not hit the motherfucker? So, Goku, uh, actually, before I forget, uh, Vegeta actually finally puts two pieces together, and in his head, he's like, wow, his body's just reacting on its own, and then he's like, wait, is it like that one time that Beerus mentioned their bodies being able to move on their own? Yes, so, Super is finally putting the pieces together, like, from the Resurrection F movie, or the Resurrection arc. Uh, it doesn't really matter because they're both they, they both kind of say the same thing so it doesn't really matter so they finally put the two pieces together from the time that Whis said that you need to be able to master uh, ma the mastery of self movement which we didn't understand at the time uh, to Ultra Instinct as it is now even though it's still basically mastery of self movement but it's it has like a confirmed name I guess you can say so Whis was in the, uh, insinuating that they could learn Ultra Instinct, but not that time period. And now Goku is actually using Ultra Instinct at this time. You know, Vegeta is finally realizing, like, oh, this is what Whis was talking about. And if this is what he was talking about, then maybe I can learn Ultra Instinct. And I kind of want to say that by the end of this tur tournament of power, that Goku, not Goku, that Vegeta will. Uh, unlock uh, Ultra Instinct, or at least a version of Ultra Instinct. I was seeing people, I was seeing certain people like kind of prognosticate and have theories that Vegeta will unlock Ultra Instinct, but what will happen is is that in this episode they were saying that like uh, Goku, you know, he has the mastery of self movement, but every single time he attacks, for a split second, he thinks about what attacks to use. So they're not as powerful as they could be. But what people were incentivizing is that with Vegeta, it's basically the exact opposite. So it's that Vegeta's attacks are super powerful and that he can read people's movements, but he can't dodge as properly. And he doesn't have the mastery self movement of Ultra Instinct like Goku does. So I think that would be kind of cool. Now that I'm seeing like more and more people like kind of like talk about it, because it actually does sound pretty cool, but uh, I I'm like still like debating whether or not I would like to see Ultra In Ultra Instinct Vegeta. Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, I do want to see Ultra Instinct Vegeta because Vegeta is just being shafted over and over again in this fucking arc. So, anyways, we go back to the fight with Goku and Kalefla. Uh, Goku's just dodging attacks, like I said, and then he finally goes for an attack. He finally goes uh, goes for an attack and gets Kalefla. Uh, his eyes flash, which incentivizes that he used his eyes to go for an attack. But if you go like the next frame, his hands and his arms are up. So it's like he actually used his hands to actually throw a punch. So eh, I don't know. He kind of might have pulled the Jiren or he might have just punched her. I don't know. So Kalefla gets up. Right, and she's not really that hurt. And even Goku, when he lands, he even notices like his attack didn't even really do all that much. And so, you know, Kefla is like, "Oh, is that all you got? You know, your punches aren't that. I just hit my mic. That that punch wasn't even that powerful." Da da da. She starts boasting, like she normally does, right? <laughs> 
The only real thing I can say that I hate about Kaofla is the amount of boasting that she does. Like, even though someone is obviously significantly more powerful than her, she's like, yeah, your attacks are wimpy, I'm stronger than you, is that all you got? Eh. And it's like, I get it, that's the nature of the Saiyans. It just pisses me off, I'm sorry. But, uh, Jiren actually wakes up from his medita uh, meditation state or whatever. You know, whatever you want to call it. So, he actually does wake up in the episode. He wakes up in the episode, he's like, oh, Goku's Ultra Instinct, and it looks like he's getting the hang of it. Maybe I should actually see what the hell is going on. So he gets up, he goes immediately towards where Dispo and Topo are, uh, and they're like, yo, are you curious about, about Goku? And, you know, Jiren has, like, no personality, so he, he just kind of stands and looks off at the distance. <laughs> he kind of stands and looks off in the distance. But the gods do take notice that Jiren does get up and that he wants to see you know, Goku's power and stuff like that, so. Uh, you know, Kaofla starts charging up with attacks, Goku's dodging, stuff happens. Uh, Go Goku actually throws a couple of kicks and punches, he charges at Kaofla, Kaofla blocks the attack, and then Goku vanishes or dodges right behind her and throws a massive kick, and it was fucking awesome, and then he does... I want, I want, I wonder if people will notice the reference when I say this, but this motherfucker punches the air and does an air palm. For those of you who don't know the reference, uh, uh, in, in Naruto, or rather Naruto Shippuden, um, the Hyuga clan has a technique called a dragon's air palm, where they basically, you know, throw their palm in the air and it causes... Uh, a bunch of air to disperse and actually be able to hit an opponent from a, a large distance and that's what Goku basically did in the episode I thought that was fucking awesome he just throws a punch in the air and then he air palms the bitch and then of course you know it doesn't do a lot you know Go Goku's attacks didn't do a lot of damage uh, it seems like but Kalfa is still breathing pretty hard so I don't really know what the scaling is there but it's interesting so, Whis actually does take notice that his attacks aren't doing too much. Uh, Ultra Instinct is actually putting a lot of strain on his body. And then it's at this point where Goku's like, okay, I gotta charge up and attack and just end it off, right? So, Kaleful is actually going, uh, not berserker mode, but she's actually, you know, kind of going a little bit, a little bit crazy. So, she, she charges up a lot of her, a lot of her energy. And she creates a lot of like sharp beams of energy, like that basically surround the whole area that she's that she's in, right? So they start cutting up like a like a whole bunch of huge like boulders of rocks from the fucking stage. Uh, it looks cool, but you know, it, she it, it seems like she can control it. It looks interesting of what she's doing with it. So of course Goku is dodging the attacks, but the whole time that he's dodging these attacks, he's actually charging up a Kamehameha, which is like the coolest fucking, um, which is like the coolest fucking like uh, scenes of shots of Goku that I voice cracked. <laughs> I fucking voice cracked, I heard it. Um, so yeah, Goku's charging up a Kamehameha the whole time whilst he's dodging all of Kaleful's attacks. And I'm pretty sure they have like the ultimate battle, uh, whatever the song is called, music playing around this time. So it sounds, uh, so the, the score is really fucking cool. The, 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 scene, the scenes and the shots look really fucking cool. He's dodging the attacks, he's charging the Kamehameha. Um, you know, everything's just missing, right? But it's like ba basically destroying the fucking arena. And as she charges up a beam of like green and red energy, it shoots at Goku. And then Goku does like the badass shit ever, and he uses the Kamehameha in his fucking hands and Ultra Instinct to dodge it, kind of slide on the beam of energy, and then he gets right up in Kaleful's fucking face, right, and shoots the Kamehameha right in front of her. And it was it was a cool it was a cool shot. I really liked it. And then at this point, you know, she just flies off the fucking arena. You know, she can't take the fucking attack anymore uh kamehameha takes like a huge chunk at the fucking arena with it and the batara breaks the batara actually does break after uh Kaleful gets eliminated from the tournament tournament of power and i pretty much prognosticated that this was gonna happen not the exact same way but 
<coughs> not the exact same way, but it still happened. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I was saying, you know, as, you know, it was before K- Kalefla actually even started, you know, doing anything. It was while she was still in her base form. So basically what I said was, oh, uh, the Daishinkan isn't going to La Potara in the Tournament of Power because that because that technically counts as outside interference and also counts as a weapon. So what he was going to do is that he was going to eliminate her from the tur- tournament, not erase, not erase her or anything, just kind of put her at the stands. And then obviously, you know, the two Namekians, uh, whose names I still can't fucking remember, even though I literally saw them, even though I literally saw their fucking names, right? Uh, they were going to get eliminated from, from Piccolo and Gohan, you know, because, you know, Gohan is fucking Gohan and, you know, him working with Piccolo because Piccolo is insanely fucking smart. And even though people do underestimate, underestimate him, he is really strong. You know, he was just basically going to get those two the Megians were going to get eliminated, and then Universe Six was going to get eliminated from the Tournament of Power by their universe getting erased. And it seems like my prognostication is coming into fruition, in the sense that you know, considering that Kale and Khalifa are now eliminated, you know, what are they going to do? What the fuck is Universe Six going to do? They have two, they have two fighters left, and even then, they're not, you know insanely powerful so you know what's gonna happen what's gonna happen in universe six they're gonna get eliminated so sadly it's it's just gonna happen that way uh i hope that people realize and do notice that i don't hate kale or Khalifa or anything it's just that you know that's just what's gonna happen sadly so anyways uh you know, Champa is like, ah, oh, the fuckers, or va- rather, Vados is like, oh, the Mechians are our last hope. Champa's like, ah, oh, fuck. Our universe is fucked. We're gonna get eliminated. And then the, Ma- the, the Mechians are like, yeah, we're gonna do it. The Namics are like, yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it for you, Champa. And it's like, no, no, you're not. You're gonna suck. <laughs> so, that's, I guess that's the end of the episode. I don't have anything else to say other than i hope you guys did enjoy <laughs> but i do want to point out really quick just because uh i finished full metal alchemist full metal, full metal alchemist brotherhood to be specifically because you know just why not all right because it's basically the same thing just shorter it's like dragon ball kai in the sense that it's shorter and get, gets rid of all the filler um i finished uh full metal alchemist fucking loved it ending was fantastic uh, you know, the whole stuff with alchemy and stuff like that was really cool as well. So I finished that and I'm watching Bleach. For those of you who watched my my death battle video on Screw Attack's death battle of Naruto vs. Ichigo, uh, I did say that I was going to eventually get to the point where I'm going to watch Bleach, probably after I watch Full Metal Alchemist. I'm watching Bleach now. I just want to give my first impressions on Bleach in this video just really quick and say that I like it. But so far, what I'm seeing, it's really slow and it's kind of painful to watch. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just that everything that I know about like Vasta Lorde and Dangai Ichigo, it's just like, I'd rather kind of just see that, but it's like, I can't skip forward ahead because I'm not going to know what the fuck is happening. You know, so I am being patient, although it is like just kind of painful, kind of just sitting here knowing what's going to happen in the future whilst watching this. But anyways, uh... That's pretty much just my first impressions. I've watched like almost 20 episodes so far. I'm like on episode 18. So, you know, let, let me just take it as, as slowly as I possibly can and, you know, enjoy what I am watching. So anyways, that's the end of the video. That's the end of the episode. Uh, episode overall, you know, the score was really fucking good. Uh, the score was really honestly like the best thing about this episode. Uh, animation was, was pretty decent, pretty good, honestly. Uh, you know actions in terms of you know just the scenes and stuff like that was really fucking good um you know there's no story like kind of like in like story you know i I don't really know how to explain it but whatever (laughs) i'm losing my breath so i'm gonna end the video here if you guys enjoy it leave a like if you're new subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video and i'm out